Hey, what's up everybody? Today I wanted to talk about timing code. So in my last video, we were talking about some of the performance gains that you get by using memory mapped file IO. You can take advantage of that virtual memory system that's really good at moving stuff from disk to memory really fast. Today I wanna to talk a little bit more about that because I find that students often aren't sure how to actually measure their code and see how fast things are going. There are a lot of tools out there that can help you with this. Today I just wanna talk about some of the really most basic ones. So you saw last time I used the time command. This is available pretty much on any Unix-based operating system. You type in time and then the command you wanna run. And it's gonna give you three numbers, the system time, the user time, and the total, like the real time, the wall clock time. So why give you three different numbers? The reason is, is that depending on what you're doing, you may care about different things. Okay, so the, the system time is basically how much time the operating system was working during the running of your process. Sometimes if you make syscalls, your process isn't actually running for the whole time. In fact, maybe your process is running for a very small amount of time or the process may be working really hard and so you're gonna see more user time and the operating system really isn't doing much for you. Either way, that's why it breaks these things out. It's why you get different numbers. One thing to keep in mind when using time is that there are a couple different versions of time. In this case, my shell actually has it built in. Uh, sometimes you'll have actually two different versions on your machine, like if I look at slash bin slash time, and they may format things slightly differently. Most of them have a dash P option that basically gives you standard compliant output, and that will give you a consistent format across each of these options. So that might be a good idea if you're writing a program that's going to actually use these. Two things to keep in mind when you're using time is first, you wanna run it multiple times. You notice that when I run it multiple times, I actually get different results. That's because there are a lot of other things running on this machine. It's actually, this is running in a VM and that VM is sharing the CPU with a lot of different processes. And so depending on how much each of those processes are working, the amount of time that I spend running this process is gonna change. And so you wanna run it multiple times and then actually like get an average or something uh, just because you might get really lucky and it may be really fast once, but the next time it might not be very fast. The other issue with the time command is that it measures the whole process. That includes all the libc startup and initialization and all of the teardown at the end. And sometimes you just want to know how fast a particular function is, how long that particular function takes. And so let's take a quick look at how you could do that programmatically. So a simple way to do it is actually just time it in your code. Okay, so let's change up my example from last time just to make it a little bit easier to see the timing. What I'm gonna do is move the bulk of the code into a function. So I'm actually gonna time that function. And then we can just basically measure the time before and the time after, and then we'll subtract it and print out the elapsed time. So time is an old and easy option, but it only has one second resolution. And so if you're timing anything like these programs that are actually finishing in less than a second, you're gonna get zero or one, and that's not super helpful. But for long running processes, that could be just fine. Next, I'm gonna try, next we're gonna try out clock. Clock is gonna be much higher resolution and you have a macro clocks per sec that actually gives us what the resolution is. Here we can basically print it out and you can see that we get much better accuracy here. Another option, if you wanna get the whole user system and, and wall clock time, you can actually use the times function. And for times, you pass in this TMS struct and it gives it back in, in the individual different entries that you wanted. So then you can pull those out and print them out individually. And you notice when I do this that uh, the numbers don't quite add up to what I've been seeing before. And that's because the resolution's a bit different. And so we actually, so if you look in the man page for times, you can actually see that there's a different way to get the resolution. And so we're gonna, we're gonna grab that resolution here and then we can apply that and we're gonna get times that actually look more reasonable. Now the last option I want to look at is clock get time. But instead of breaking your time down into system time, wall clock time, and user time like times did, instead it's breaking it down into seconds and nanoseconds. Now clock get time is probably going to give you the highest resolution of any of the timing options that we've looked at so far. And you can see this here, you know, if we print this out, you can see we get seconds and we have nanoseconds. And again, the numbers match up pretty closely to what we've been seeing before. 
But one concern that you want to keep track of with all of these is that they can wrap around. So in this case, you notice I got a negative value, which of course isn't a negative value. It's just that it carried over into the number of seconds. And so I can easily change the code so I convert everything into nanoseconds first. And then I have a much longer time before it can wrap around. But either way, if you're ever using this technique and you end up with a negative value, you know that your timer wrapped around or something else went wrong. And you either need to account for it or just run the test again. And so that's all for today. I just wanted to show you a couple techniques how you can measure code to actually see if your code's getting faster or slower or to compare two pieces of code. This can be really useful when you're designing systems to make sure that you're making good design, good design decisions. There's a lot more that can be said about this. There are a lot of other tools that will help you profile applications and actually measure how much time your program's spending in each of your different functions. And I hope I have an opportunity to make some videos about those profiling options in the near future. But until then, I hope this is helpful and I will see you later. Thank you.